ethnic groups such as Poles and Italians who are seeking only to be treated as respectful law-abiding citizens should be treated. There are also other Caucasians who are pretty good people and not without merit. Regardless of the color of their skin, they look upon the USA as a land of golden opportunities. There are ample employment opportunities in this country for all those who wish to work. In the freedom of the USA, no one needs to live in, in an undesirable environment. Anyone can improve his living standards and place of residence whenever he wishes. Most civil rights leaders wouldn't agree that this is true for Negroes. Anyone can uplift his lot in life. Anyone who really wants to. With a helping hand, perhaps, are you in favor of integrated schools? They may not be the best for Negro pupils and teachers, but I am for whatever the society involved decides. Why wouldn't they be best? Many Negro teachers prefer to teach in Negro schools, and many Negro students prefer to attend Negro schools. Nationwide demonstrations to integrate schools would seem to indicate that the majority feel otherwise. How do you feel about demonstrations? Demonstrations are not the proper way to enact laws. They should not be incited by agitators seeking power and votes. Don't you think Negroes should have the vote? I favor suffrage for all 21 years and older. Even for illiterates? Yes, no one was barred in the mythical country alpaca. Do you regard Martin Luther King as an agitator seeking power and votes? I share J. Edgar Hoover's opinion of him. Are you saying that you agree with Hoover? That King is the biggest liar in the United States? I cannot detect that King has any regard for the truth, religion, sincerity, peace, morality, or the best interest of the Negro people. What effect do you feel the Civil Rights Movement is having on the South? The South is upset. There is prejudice throughout the nation aimed at the South. Although the South has handled its problem much better than New York and California, the South is great and will survive. If the South has handled its racial problem better than New York or California, why do you think most civil rights leaders agree that the South has the worst race relations in the nation? Because agitators devote their attacks mostly against the South. If you were president, what actions would you take in the field of civil rights? I don't think one man should decide the relations to be followed in civil rights. He could develop a mania of despairing for all the white people in the world to be ruled by colored people. The United Nations, Great Britain, the Soviet Union, the United States, and Red China apparently intend to enforce that all Caucasians in Africa shall be ruled by non-Caucasians. You have frequently been called a bigot. What's your answer to this charge? I suppose a bigot is whatever someone wants to say of another who disagrees with them. A bigot is expected to be biased, intolerant, and have a closed mind. Well, I have a consuming curiosity and always like to hear the different viewpoints. I consider myself open-minded and therefore not a bigot. You're not a, you're not anti-Negro? No, I like the Negroes. I have known and I believe nearly all of them like me. You've also been called anti, anti-Semitic, 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 are you? There is no basis for any of this. Just about all my life, some of my very best friends have been fine Jewish people. Jews should protect the profit mode of systems and oppose all trends toward dictatorship. Under totalitarian government, they would be prosecuted as they have been for centuries. I have worked to keep alive the synagogue, council, crusade against anti-Semitism,
in the Soviet Union. I think I've done more against anti-Semitism in the Soviet Union than anyone else in the United States. What about anti-Semitism the United, in the United States? Have you done anything against that? I think so. I try to discourage it in every way possible. You've also been charged with anti-Catholicism. Is there any truth to it? No. Some of my best friends and associates are Catholics, including Cardinal Spellman and the noted Catholic layman Ed Marr of Dallas, who has been treasurer of Lifeline. The Ku Klux Klan is notoriously anti-Negro, anti-Semitic, and anti-Catholic. How do you feel about it? I have had no experience with it. If it practices violence, however, I deplore it, for I deplore all violence. How do you feel about the House Committee on Un-American Activities investigation of the Klan? I suppose it is to placate pro-communists who are subversive. I suppose it is to placate pro-communists who are subversive. How will it placate? Placate. How will it placate them? Communists and their tolerators abhor the investigations of communist activities conducted by the committee. If they can cause the committee to sidetrack its investigations of communist subversaries to investigate people who are highly opposed to communism, pro-communists might be placed, might be placated and feel more kindly toward the committee. If the committee exposes clan violence and money-making rackets, however, the investigations will serve a fine purpose. Do you feel that HUAC's anti-communist investigations have served a fine purpose? It has served well, but it is handicapped by Supreme Court decisions favoring communists. What decisions? I don't want to get into a legal discussion. We take it you oppose the court's decision in the field of civil liberties? Civil liberties? It has acted illegally in ignoring precedents and it and it is actually legislating. Any court is supposed to observe precedents, otherwise the lawyers of the land who study past decisions can never know what is the law of the land. If the Supreme Court takes action outside of its constitutional rights, it is acting illegally. It was never contemplated that the Supreme Court could amend the Constitution as there are regular procedures for its amendment, wherein both houses of Congress and legislators of the states participate. Yeah. Many conservatives feel that the court is unconstitutionally hindering police work and coddling criminals by protecting the rights of the accused. Do you agree with them? The court is befriending criminals, communists, and socialists. Why do you lump them together? And how is the court befriending them? Communist activities in the United States are criminal and can be spoken of along with other criminal offenses. Anyone who reads the papers can find decisions whereby the court befriends them nearly every day. Do you think the threat of communism in America is very serious? Yes, and I do not understand others who doubt it. In what areas of American life do you feel the communists are strongest? In the most critical areas, such as some of the most critical areas are the State Department, the Defense Department, the large foundations, the communications media, and the entertainment field. What makes you think they are strong in these areas? The United States has been in charge of the world since World War II, during which time the communists have taken into domination one-third of the world's population. Would the election of a conservative to the presidency help arrest this trend in your opinion? I am not a conservative and as a constructive I am not yet campaigning for 1968. Many may class me as a dangerous right winger.
Do you feel that Johnson could be defeated by a conservative in 68? The thin roads of communism cannot be halted. Johnson should be defeated by someone who as president could stop the communist takeover. Unless communism is defeated, it makes no difference who is president. He would be forced to be a stooge. Are you referring to a communist takeover of the U.S. itself? Yes, the communist takeover to be feared is the same kind that has taken place in other nations. Do you agree with the Minuteman that there is an actual threat of armed communist invasions? I shouldn't be asked to agree with the Minuteman. The communists need not invade the U.S. They are already here in numbers of at least 2% and will rule unless understood and restrained and defeated. How did you arrive at that figure? The pro-communist sentiment in the United States today is greater than when the Bolsheviks overthrew the Kerensky government and took over Russia, and stronger in the U.S. and in some other countries before the takeover. It has always been agreed that the percent of communist infiltration prior to their taking over a country has been around 2% or 4% whom do you number whom do you number among this 2% it would serve no purpose to try to name them for the people of the USA who have all to lose are not sufficiently concerned themselves to find out who they are Needless to say, however, they are here. The United States cannot afford to permit the communists to continue taking over from the free world two or three hundred million people per year. Do you think communism has made inroads in the U.S. since Johnson became president? Indeed, I do. The demonstrations throughout the nation favoring our communist enemies and the actions of members of Congress in opposing our war effort indicate communist inroads. Johnson can be commanded in the personal personnel he is using abroad only in the appointment of Admiral Rabon as the director of the CIA. In general, what do you think of Johnson's foreign policy? I don't approve of Santo Domingo. What don't you approve of? We sent troops in there to prevent the communists from setting up another beach beachhead in the Western Hemisphere. You don't think we should have? Of course we should have. But then after Johnson was advised by McGeorge Bundy and Navarro Harriman, the actions that have been taken since then, so far as I can tell, unless changed, will help set up a communist government there. What actions? 20,000 U.S. troops were sent into the Dominican Republic and prevented immediate communist seizure of that country. Then President Johnson sent Harriman and McGeorge Bundy to formulate a policy there. And General Wesson, Y. Wesson, and other prominent non-communists were forced into exile. There's been no evidence of communist takeover since then. What do you think of Johnson's handling of the war in Vietnam? I think that it would be better to listen to the MacArthur School of Thought, General Courtney Whiteney, General A.C. Weedemere, General Van Fleet, General Bonnerfellers, and younger men trained by them. Whatever this school of thought would advise, I think should be followed. What do you think they would advise? That we try to win it by bombing North Vietnam as much as necessary. By blockading North Vietnam by using Asiatic troops as far as possible. From South Korea and the Philippines and by taking advantage of nationalist China. Large and well trained army. What do you think of our refraining from bombing Hanoi? I think we must do whatever we can to win the war. If we were to bomb Hanoi, do you think the Red Chinese might enter the war? They're doing an awful lot there now, I suspect. 
We should do whatever the MacArthur trained group of strategists think. But what if Red China were to send an army into Vietnam? We should do whatever our generals advise us to do. Including bombing China? If that is what they advise, yes. A number of conservatives have proposed that we destroy Red China's nuclear capabilities now before they become a strong nuclear power. Are you in favor of this? It might not be too bad of an idea. Certainly we had done this to Russia, as General George C. Kenney recommended, which we easily could have done in the 50s. I feel we wouldn't have nearly as many problems as we do today in the world. Our country would be a good would be a good deal more secure. Maybe knocking out Red China's nuclear installations now would prevent China touching off the Third World War five years from now. We might wish we had done it. You wish that we had knocked out the Soviet Union's nuclear capacity? Yes, General Kenny, who was in charge of the Air Force in the Pacific, unfolded a plan to me in 1950 that the USA should put loaded bombers over Moscow, accompanied by transport planes which could pick up and convey Russia's nuclear material out of Russia, and tell Joe that we would drop the bombs unless they placed their material in our transports. At that time, we had more than 10 times as many bombs as Russia, and the means of conveying them, they would have been forced to surrender their nuclear equipment. This, or some similar actions, should have been taken then. Even if the plan had worked, wouldn't we have alienated worldwide public opinion? It is through weakness, not strength, that we lose esteem in the world. A workable plan of the above na of the above nature should be put into use today to put an end to Red China's nuclear power. Otherwise, the lives of millions of Americans will be destroyed. Do you think we would be morally justified in doing this? We shouldn't send our soldiers over to Vietnam to fight in the jungles without supporting them. in every way we can. The very least we can do for them is to face up to the stiff decisions we still someday have to make anyhow. Don't you think bombing Red China's nuclear installations might touch off World War III? No, I don't think so. The communists are defeating us without forcing a showdown. Why would they make the same mistake Hitler made? He might have defeated the world if he had been more patient. I think that the communists have learned from his mistakes. Besides, China is helpless against our nuclear power, and I don't believe that. I don't believe that Soviet would would come to her aid if we took this move. If they did. They would be aiding a deadly enemy. If the Soviets thought China could destroy the U.S. alone, they would probably aid China. But they know Red China would have no chance with the United States in a war unless our activities were discreet, directed by strange persons with a twisted education who would prefer to be defeated. What strange persons? If people would read more anti-communist literature, they find out for themselves that there are some people in government who always seem to come out of this losing side in their dealings with the enemy. Would you care to name them? I think people should find out for themselves. Isn't there an alternative to war? Might there not be a chance of bringing Red China peacefully into the world community by admitting it to the United Nations? I think that the UN is so non-constructive that it doesn't make much difference, though I think it soon will be admitted because of the left-leaning tendencies of too many UN members. How is the UN, as you say, non-constructive? What about its role in settling the Suez and Congo crisis, among others? 
I don't think the settlement of the Swiss crisis was favorable to the United States. And in the Congo, we ended up furnishing planes to fly UN troops into Katanga to butcher people who were the U.S.'s sincere friends in the Congo. Some UN funds have been used to help Castro's agriculture. We pay out of proportion to support the UN, while some don't bother to pay their dues at all. This has the effect of sometimes conveying our money to our enemies. Would you like to see us get out of the UN? Certainly. What would, what would that accomplish? We would do better in the worldwide struggle against communism. I feel the UN wasn't organized to help the United States. No freedom-loving nation will gain from participation in the UN. It's controlled by communists who can win a vote any time they wish. If that's true, why hasn't Red China been admitted? Because though they pretend they do, the Soviets don't really want them admitted. They are rivals for leadership of the communist world. And apparently the Soviets feel that keeping Red China out helps them stay on top. Thus, it's not the U.S., but the U.S.S.R. that's keeping China out. The U.N. is very seldom on the side of the United States. By remaining in the U.N., all we do is lend it respectability and funds. If we would withdraw, it would have little of either. We would become the leader of the freedom forces of the world. Instead of being a helpless hanger-on with those who want to destroy us. Do you think we should also withdraw diplomatic recognition from communist countries? There's nothing to gain by recognizing them. The communists can't feed their own people, and they cannot manufacture and distribute industrial products in a way that makes economic sense. If we would... Quit helping them out in any way, I think they would become helpless and collapse. Then you're against all trade with Iron Curtain countries. I think it's a sure way for us to destroy ourselves. Even if the trade were restricted to non-strategic goods, just about everything is, is strategic to them. Whatever the enemy wants to buy from us is only what he needs most. Do you consider wheat strategic? A communist enemy, enemy will always need food more than guns and munitions. If we keep them fed, why they will be able later to fight on full stomachs. I'd rather see the communists starve and see them killing our boys like they're doing right now in Vietnam. What do you think of our foreign aid program? I think that if it were put to a vote, the American people would choose to end it. You know, each billion dollars our government wastes on foreign aid is a waste. It costs the average American family $25. So far, we've thrown about $130 billion down the foreign aid rat hole. That's enough money for each family to send a youngster through college. Don't you think foreign aid has helped rebuild Europe and raise the economics of undeveloped nations? Not really. Much of it went to build the economy of nations which were becoming socialist or communist. Yugoslavia, for example. Foreign aid to other countries often actually hurts the economy of the country to which the aid is given. As has been the case in Bolivia and Laos, gifts to the slave masters will never help the slaves. Do you take an equally dim view of Peace Corps assistance? No, I'm under the impression that its conduct abroad has not been the miserable failure that the Job Corps has been at home. In countries where the Peace Corps is helpful, the U.S. taxpayers may be justified in keeping up the assistance. Do you think we may have? Do you think we have any more, any moral obligation to help other countries? 
We have an obligation to help these countries that have to been that have. We have an obligation to help these countries that have been that have been of help to us. Otherwise, there is none. If we don't help other countries, don't you think the Russians will and win their friendship by doing so? You can't buy friends. In any case, the Soviets don't constructively help the citizens of any country, including their own. They gain their standing with other countries through deceitful propaganda. How do you think the United States is faring in the Cold War? Pretty badly. Communists are advancing, and at least most of the time we are retreating. We are happy when we can say that we haven't lost any ground to the Reds in a while, or at least not very much. Now we should be asking ourselves where we have advanced freedoms lying, where they have advanced, free, where they have lost territories to the free world, where we have liberated people held in communist slavery. The answer is that our victories are very few and theirs are plentiful. We are losing the Cold War.